Hey there folks, this is Ian from the Electromaker Show and this is a companion video to the tutorial that I am uh, publishing on the Electromaker website and it is for the Thingy 91. I did say for quite some time I've been hoping to do some tutorial materials on this little board because it is a lot of fun. Um, and this isn't a programming tutorial, you don't need to know any coding in order to follow along with this. All you need is a Thingy 91 and the included iBasis SIM card and this takes you from getting it out of the box to connecting it to the NRF cloud. That's all we're doing today. So, let's get going. And before we do get started, take the SIM card out of the box. If you're using an iBasis SIM like I am, it'll look a little like this. Uh, there is a, a long number on the back of the SIM card itself. It's three six-digit numbers, which is actually one 18-digit number. Um, write that down and also rub off the rubbing strip and write down the PUK number as well. You will need both of those later on in this tutorial. And once the SIM card is in the thingy, you won't be able to get that number so easily. The first thing we'll need is the NRF Connect Suite from Nordic's website. There's a link in the tutorial, and uh, all of the software tools we're using today are free. Now download it for your platform and then open it up. Find the Programmer app on the list and then install it. We'll use this program to flash the NRF 9160 system and package on the Thingy 91. We'll also need the latest firmware for the Thingy91's modem and the test application we'll be using today. On the Thingy91 page on the Nordic Semiconductor website, head to the Downloads tab and download the latest package. Once it's downloaded, unzip it and open up the Programmer app from NRF Connect. We'll use MCU Boot to flash the Thingy, so make sure that is selected in the left side panel. The next step is to connect the Thingy91 to the computer via USB, but make sure the Thingy91 is switched off before doing so because we'll need to turn it on in a special way. Um, we're going to be using serial recovery mode, and we, we turn that on by pressing the large central button marked SW3 while turning the Thingy91 on. Now confusingly, um, if you've done it right, it'll look like nothing has happened as the onboard LED will stay off. Now make sure that you do press this big button in the middle here when you turn it on. That's the one that puts this system and package, the cellular IoT system and package we're using, into the serial programming mode. There is another tiny little button just on the side here, um, and if you press that one in, that actually puts this little system in ch on chip here into a uh, programming mode. There's a Bluetooth uh, chip on this, which we're going to talk about another day. But I just wanted to point that out because there are actually two switches. You want this big one in the middle. Now, back in the programmer, select the Thingy91 from the drop-down menu in the top left corner. Now click Add File, Browse, and find the folder you unzipped previously. We'll be starting with the modem firmware, and that is a zip file which starts MFW NRF 9160, followed by a version number, which may differ slightly from the one you see here. Select that file, and ensuring you do in fact have MCU boot selected, click Write. The process can take a little while. It's worth noting that the first time I tried to upload the modem firmware and the uh, application firmware we're about to do, it failed. Um, and that may have been down to a dodgy USB cord on my end. Um, I got around it simply by turning the thingy off again, um, holding that switch again while I turned it off again, selecting the thingy again, selecting the file again, and clicking right, and that time it was fine for both. Next, we'll repeat that process to upload the application firmware. In this instance, I'm uploading the Thingy91 Asset Tracker version 2 LTEM hex file, which is located in the IMG FOTU DFU hex directory. This is a pre-compiled hex file, and it works specifically with the LTEM pro uh, protocol, so if your SIM works with NB-IoT instead, you'll need to use the file for NB-IoT. Um, there is a handy contents text file in the root directory documenting these images, along with others included in the downloaded software bundle. Select the hex file and write it to the Thingy91. So, we've now got the Thingy91 firmware ready. It's time to set up NRF Cloud. If you haven't already, set up an NRF Cloud account and sign in. And to begin, we're going to click the large plus sign in the top left corner and select LTE device. You'll be prompted now to activate your SIM card, and this is where those details you noted down before will come in handy. Note that if you're using an already activated SIM card, you can just select skip this step. Now, before you go any further, this is the point where you'll want to turn the thingy off again and then turn it on again, but this time without holding down the button. We don't want to go into programming mode again. We want to just run the software that we've put on the thingy, or the firmware, as it were. Um, and you'll want to do this somewhere where you can get cellular reception and preferably GPS reception, um, which I know is difficult when you're on a computer because you don't get great GPS reception indoors, but a windowsill is good or some kind of open area. Um, uh, pretty soon we'll be finished and you can take your thingy out with you wherever you would like um, and get perfect GPS reception there. But just for now, I found that having it on my desk right next to uh, an open window was enough to get some GPS reception. 
Once the thing is turned back on again, it will blink several colors while it tries to connect to the cloud. It took a little while for me, and the operation chart that decodes these RGB messages was quite helpful to know what's going on. It's linked in the text tutorial that accompanies this video. Just another interesting note, um, that double pulsing white blinking LED, as it mentions in the chart that you were looking for, um, is what I saw when I was setting my thingy up. Um, there's a couple of tutorials I've read that say that's a different color. I don't know if it's the case in the past, it did have a, a different RGB LED signage, but that's just something to watch out for. For me, double pulse white was absolutely correct. That meant it was connected to the cloud and I was ready to pair my thingy with my account. And the way you connect to the account is by continuing in the browser. You enter your 15 digit device ID and your PIN. These are printed on a sticker on top of the Thingy91 PCB. After entering this code, you should be connected to the NRF cloud. And after a few moments, you'll see the data streaming in from the Thingy91. Now you can see all of that data from the onboard sensors. It, it updates in real time from your Thingy91 and provided the battery is charged, you can now go out and your position will be logged on the NRF cloud along with the temperature and humidity data along with other things. We'll take a deeper look at the different sensors on board the Thingy91 another day, but just as a quick bonus tip before we finish this getting started guide, you can select data from distinct time periods in the NRF cloud and download that data as a CSV file. And of course you can do with those CSV files what you will. So that is it for our very basic getting started with Thingy91 tutorial. Um, I love these little boards. I think I've made that very clear on the Electromaker show. Um, and this was just really getting it up and running, seeing the application that's provided by Nordic and, and getting it connected to the NRF cloud. In future tutorials, we'll actually look into how to install a tool chain and set up Visual Studio codes to program this thing. Um, and that's going to be coming along with them. An Edge Impulse tutorial will be coming up quite soon. Um, if there are any other Thingy91 tutorials you'd like to see or any tutorials of any kind, really, if there's anything that you're working on or that you'd like to know more about, do let me know. Um, I'm happy to do these things for Electromaker when I have the time to, although it's become a bit of a meme that, um, that I have far more hardware than I have time to play with it these days. Um, but yes, do let me know if this has been useful to you, um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Take care.